Welcome back to the Thinking Deeper About Business podcast. I'm hoping today you will walk away with a few golden nuggets, some knowledge bombs and life lessons from my guest, who is Rob Jones. Welcome to the studio, Rob. Um, firstly, I want to congratulate you on winning the prestigious award that you have for Made in Manchester. Um, what was the award? Just share with us. It was the Manchester Community Hero Award. And just, just explain to me, how you felt so go back to that moment you sat at your table um and they've just announced the category so you've all of a sudden now tuned in and the names are being announced all the nominees and then your name gets announced uh, yeah gobsmacked to be honest Were you really? <laughs> yeah i really wasn't uh, expecting to win to be honest you know it's a uh, a very competitive category there's been so much great work going on in greater manchester from all the businesses involved in Pro Manchester. Um, so when my name came up, uh, gobsmacked and then really humbled. You know, it's a real honour to win it, especially as it's the inaugural award as well. Yeah. Well, it used, it, was it the Lockdown Award last year? The Lockdown Hero Award, I think. Yes, and believe so. And then changed it to the community one. I mean, the criteria alone for this category is to go above and beyond. And then I got told that the judges were completely blown away by you. So what did you possibly do that was that great to have not only won the award but to to have that lasting impression on the judges as well i suppose it was probably variety um i support a number of charities uh, across manchester um it's just causes close to my heart and things that are linked to my business where with some corporate social responsibility as well um, but I, I keep myself busy is probably one way of putting it. I think uh, my girlfriend would definitely say I'm far too busy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when th there's so much I need doing, you know, I'm the kind of person that always gets stuck in. Um, so it's been a, a real honour to help all these charities and good causes do stuff over lockdown when it's been a really hard time for our city and we really need people to step forward. And you really did step forward, didn't you, with some of the voluntary work that you did. Tell us a little bit about that. So variety then. Um, I suppose the biggest engagement is with St. Jambulance. Um, I've volunteered with them since I was 11 and I was a cadet and I've just been engaged with them ever since. Um, when the pandemic kicked off, um, they called for trainers to step forward and deal with the vaccination programme. So I was one of the first vaccination trainers in the greater Manchester area working with my other volunteer colleagues. And we delivered plenty of training to the thousand odd volunteers in Greater Manchester so that we could help the NHS vaccinate people. Um, and then looking after vaccinators as well. Um, I do a bit of people management in my job. So when they needed someone to help induct all these volunteers and help them with the health and safety and the IT and the point of contact, it seemed a bit of a natural, yeah, go on then. And before you know it, you've got 300 volunteers with your email address to uh, get them out to vaccination centres. So that was fun. <laughs> and it's it's not easy. I mean, I did some of the, the voluntary responder work um, when the whole pandemic took place. And, you know, the world is in disarray and fear has set in. And then, so what goes through Rob Jones's mind at that time where he just gets into gear and decides, well, I don't care what anybody else is doing. This is what I'm going to go and do to help. I suppose product of my training, really. Um, I'm a Navy veteran. Um, I'm the, the Navy or any of the armed forces trains you how to respond in a crisis, how to think logically and calmly and identify needs and then deal with those needs in priority order. So I just looked at what I knew needed doing, what I could offer to help and got on with it, just like everyone else did. Were there times when you were doing the voluntary work? It's a very selfless thing to do. Were there times where you kind of thought, what was I thinking? You know, maybe I needed to just do what everybody else was doing was sit at home and <laughs> go to furlough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but there was some very tiring points, um, especially towards March time when we were delivering vaccinated training every single weekend. You know, I don't know if you know, but Old Trafford lets us use, um, Manchester United lets us use Old Trafford mm. for all their conference rooms as a hypercenter. And we were training hundreds of people at a time. So it was pretty exhausting doing 37 hours in work because we were still working full time, full -time remotely yeah. uh, and then spending all weekend at Hypercenter training volunteers and then back into the office mm. and all the challenges you had with dealing with your staff and people getting infected and their well-being issues as well as delivering for your customers. So it was pretty tired about the March point. It became a bit of a, I need a weekend off now. <laughs> <laughs> what was the self-talk around that time to keep you going? 
uh, just look at what I need to do and then keep getting on with it. You know, what, what's the mission? Get on. <laughs> and what's interesting about your award is a lot of what you have actually been commended for is outside of your work. Um, whereas with a lot of the other categories, they were, you know, awarded to people that were already doing things as part of their curriculum within the workplace. Um, what motivates you to continue to do this, the selfless service that you do for the community and beyond? So I grew up in Blakely in North Manchester, which is a pretty deprived area. Um, and there wasn't much in the way of infrastructure. So growing up, it was the likes of the charities and youth organisations that were really there for me and the people of my generation to give us something to do and learn new skills and socialise safely. Mm -hmm. So I just decided that when I became an adult, I would keep doing that as well, you know, pass it forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just kept doing it ever since. And what does Rob do for Rob? Oh, <laughs> swimming. I love being in the water, funnily enough. Um, spending time walking the dog outdoors like being in the outdoors in general is great you know yeah and that does that do you think that's important as far as your own well-being as well because for you to be supportive to other people you've got to kind of keep your head straight yourself don't you yeah absolutely um that's been painfully obvious to a number of us over the pandemic you know and you really do need to make sure you're looking after yourself as well sometimes just taking that night to say sorry I can't be there this night uh, just because you need to kind of recharge yourself as well because you can't help anyone else if you can't help yourself true um I'm a big believer in personal growth um what you do is very selfless it's for a lot of people um what what's your kind of personal journey in terms of your personal growth what do you see yourself doing outside of when the pandemic which now ha you know gladly is is getting better and better um what kind of things have you got planned that you would then start to look at to invest time more in yourself yeah. uh, i'm doing a lot of work with the sea cadets in greater manchester currently and i'm a governor at hotwood hall further education college near me um very passionate about working with young people to make sure that they've got opportunities to do something different so that they're not just faced with the choice of just retail or just warehouse work they've got the opportunities to go into tech business um activism anything that interests them you know you don't have to be constrained by what's available in your local area so working with that local education provider and the, the chat cadet units to make sure that they've got these opportunities and the kids can do something different so basically, but the the question I asked you <laughs> was for your personal growth, <laughs> and immediately, which is indicative of how selfless you are, you talked about what how you would change other people's lives. So you know, what, though, I, it's it's good to meet new people. Um, I get a lot of enjoyment out of meeting different people in different situations. You know, I've been lucky to meet a variety of characters across the world with my navy career and different cultures. Uh, and even going down the road, you can meet different people with different drivers and actually see what makes people tick, mm. especially in Manchester, you know, such a diverse city, such a, a varied range of people. You know, you, you can meet some really interesting characters and there's always something different to do and have a laugh with someone. Mm. So it's just great to get out and socialise with people, especially after living in your, uh, your box room on Zoom or Teams for yeah. a year. It's been a crazy year, hasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely crazy year. Um, thank you so much. I just want to touch a little bit on your armed forces experience and, you know, some of the things that you saw there that have helped you now do the things that you do in your current work. Um, mm. You know, can you share some of those moments with us? Yeah. So I was an engineering apprentice in the Navy um, and then got commissioned from the ranks to be an engineering officer, which was a real honour. Um, you know, I, I got to see a lot of the world. You know, we were on operations off the coast of Africa, um, countering drugs runners, um, time in the, the Gulf, dealing with maritime security, um, and also working with the Navy's bomb clearance divers um, so that we could actually maintain their diving safely and effectively all over the world, dealing with the aftermath of World War II and all the mines that people still wash up all the time. Wow. So it was a really varied environment with a lot of different experiences, um, but with fantastic people in every single assignment. What kind of characteristics do you think you need to possess to be able to do that kind of role? Because some of that sounds really dangerous. A lot of it, they can train you though. Um, it, it, I don't think it needs a special kind of person to do that kind of work. You know, it, if you're open and receptive and you want to better yourself and help others, they can give you the training. You know, no matter what your career path is, be it engineering, medical, 
seamanship, you know, steering, you know, there's all sorts of different things, but as long as you're open to the opportunities that come to you, then there's a career for you. I feel like the training's worked on you because you're just so calm and, <laughs> and I, can't, I can't imagine you getting panicky in any situation. And if you've been up against some of those things that you've just described, like in Africa and, and you know, in the Gulf, I think, yeah, I can see <laughs> the training's definitely worked. <laughs> and it's probably why you can apply it so well into all the other areas of your voluntary work that you do as well. I'm going to put you on the spot now and see whether you, you know, just get slightly nervous or not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a quick eight question fire round. Uh, you're not allowed to overthink this. You've just got to go with what I ask you. Um, dream mentor that you could have on your speed dial? Oh, Tony Stark. Tony Stark? Yeah. <laughs> as in Game of Thrones, Tony Stark? No, as in oh, Iron right. Man, Tony Stark. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You never know. Throw the engineering bit in, why not? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you never know. Um, an Audible or a podcast or a book? Uh, the Daily Stoic podcast. The Daily Stoic. Okay, yeah. cool. Hopefully this is stuff people can take away with them, you know. Absolutely, and, and go yeah. And look at. Um, a brain food that you might kind of use regularly that you think helps? Mm, brain food? Raspberries. Okay. <laughs> it's different for different people. Yeah. If it was my brother, he'd probably say pizza. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, there's no right answer to that one. Um, the most useful one-liner everyone should know. Let's wait and think about that. <laughs> okay. Um, an Instagram handle you can't live without. Ooh. Daily Stoic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan. Um, an app you can't live without? Mm, the Times. The Times, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the worst piece of advice someone's ever given you that's always like stuck in your head? Just jump, you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the worst. I think that might be a good one. Parachuting, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, being a fairly young person still um what if you could change something overnight in the world what would it be get people working together better <laughs> yeah yeah change the world quicker i guess I suppose yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much it's been amazing i'd love to hear about the stuff you're doing i think it's great um you know especially during a pandemic when people really were just quite worried about themselves you decided to step up and do something to help people so yes i salute you for that thank you um i hope you've had a, a good time on the podcast yeah thanks for having me really appreciate it cool. and um you know thanks to my company talis for actually supporting the volunteering because they actually give them so much time and it's really really useful um appreciate it off them oh thank you rob thank you <laughs>